This is Lee Bricknell talking with Anne Bruff, chairperson of the Kenilworth Carnival Committee and the 1989 Carnival Queen, who was and is Marilyn Rofe. Have I said it right? Absolutely. Brilliant. And we also have Marjorie Davis, who's the secretary of the committee. So this Saturday, it's the 80th Kenilworth Carnival, which is staggering to think it started in 1932. Anne, I'll start with you. Um, a bit of a tough question, but why do you think the Kenilworth Carnival has survived for so long when other surrounding towns' carnivals just haven't? I mean, they've all but disappeared. Yeah, ours, I think ours is the best carnival in the Midlands. It's really well supported by people of Kenilworth and people come out of from outside Kenilworth to watch it. And we have a great community spirit in Kenilworth and everybody joins in on the day. That's a really good answer and I think it's the right one as well. I mean, it really is um, a, a big... It goes wider than Kenilworth, really. We get people here from surrounding towns, don't we, on the day? Yeah, we get a lot of people from surrounding towns. When I worked at Kenilworth Police Station, I was amazed at the phone calls that I got asking the day when the carnival was. So it actually just showed to me how much response we get from um, other areas. And do you... um, I know this week in particular must be mad, absolutely mad for you. Are you busy? Yeah, just a touch. Uh, I'm glad Marjorie's staying with me because we're like going through all the jobs. It's been a tricky one this year, but you know, with a lot of support we've got there. But yeah, we are quite busy at the moment. Okay, Marjorie, I'll I'll ask you a question. Um, I know um, with all charities, because Radio Warnford is a charity as well, we have to raise our own funds. It's getting tougher to do that, to raise funds. And I know it's been tough for the Carnival Committee this year, but the committee did take a really bold step. Um, and you held a brainstorming meeting earlier this year. How did that go? Was that was that a worthwhile exercise? Yes, it um, it worked out very well. We've uh, ended up with quite a few sponsorships from it and some very good ideas on what to do. Sometimes you just have to tap into your local resources to find out what's there, don't you? Yes, and, and I think the brainstorming meeting was one of the best ideas that uh, someone came up with. Great. Is it giving you ideas for the for the future as well, or is it just this year? No, it'll be for the future. Um, we'll carry on with what we've done, and we'll probably put some of the other things into place as well. And also, I think it's worth at this stage because we don't know who's listening. But you're always looking for volunteers. What sort of what sort of things do you do you need people to help you with? Shall I ask that to you, Anne? Or mm, yes. Um, we we need extra support on the day, help us on the day selling raffle tickets and marshalling the carnival because there's only approximately 12 of us on the committee so we're stretched very thin having both events. Um, people can come and help count the pennies if they get in touch. Um, generally, if anyone wanted to give an hour or their whole day's time, we could fit them in and find them a role to do. So they don't necessarily have to join and be a committee member, because that's the sort of thing that puts people off. They could contact you and volunteer for specific things you want them to do. Yeah, we have the Friends of Kenilworth Carnival Committee, so they can be on a rotor and be asked, could you do this selling raffle tickets on a certain day? We've got quite a few, I think. We've got about 50 people on that list. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, at the end of the interview, shall I give out the, um, the email address? Yes. yes, okay. So I'll now um, have a chat with Marilyn, who was the 1971 That's right. Carnival Queen. So what was your, your fondest memories of that day? I think I've got a lot of fond memories of that day. Um, my sister had been Carnival Queen in 67, and I was so happy to be able to follow in her footsteps. But on the day, I mean, it, everything was building for that day. It was it was so exciting. You, you you didn't know which way to turn, to wave, to smile. You ached at the end of the day. <laughs> but I think the prestige was representing Kenilworth, you know, the town I'd grown up in, and that was a great privilege. We'd um, had lots of function throughout the year, raising for the different charities, uh, which culminated in the Carnival Ball where the cheques were presented and it was just a wonderful year. If you were shy at the end of it, you certainly weren't <laughs> <laughs> when you'd finished. What Can you remember what the weather was on your day? The sunshine. 
That's what we that's what we want on Saturday. Isn't it? We do. It was a beautiful day, and please God, it will shine for us on Saturday. I think that's what people perhaps don't realise that it's not just a day thing. It's not just the carnival day where you sit on the float. You do do many things throughout the year. Is, is, does that still go on for the current queens? Yes, it does. Um, I remember sitting in a coal scuttle in Talisman Square, uh, raising um, <laughs> raising for funds, holding the bucket for people to put the money in. There were lots of different fundraising events, kicking off football matches, anything that was going to raise funds, and making speeches, supporting the mayor, the councillors at different events that were held. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. I loved every moment. Good. And I understand that there's, to celebrate the 80th um, carnival, there's a procession of pre- previous queens, and I'm assuming you're going to be there. Oh, well, yes, you couldn't keep me away. <laughs> and and how many and how many other queens have we, we got? We believe there's 10 coming on the day. Um, they're going to be, some are going to be in open top cars, and some, like myself, will be walking. You're going to walk? I see. I walked last year. I'm never going to do it again. But I was playing a snare drum at the same time. I'd, I'd love to be driven in the car. But as the event organiser, as well as a past queen, um, I have to walk. And you were the queen in... What year were you the queen in? 1989. 1989. So what's your memories of that? I did a lot um, of events in the town. I opened Boots which was really good. I read that in the programme guide. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it was brilliant. I opened Boots um, and I had um, a lunch fit for a queen in the castle cooked by local guides. Um, Yeah, it was a great year and obviously to say thank you, I've stayed on the committee um, and are now the event manager for Kenilworth Carnival. One question I'm always asked is why is there not a Carnival King? (laughs) <laughs> Do you know, I'm asked that quite a bit. Um, there was one once, I was informed, um, way back when it started, there was a Carnival King, mm. but it only occurred once. Don't know why. Um, I'm not sure whether the boys would, would be interested, but no. if they would, you know, we're willing to move forward with the times and maybe include that for another year. Mm, something to think about, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if, well, you, you probably are aware, because it's in the programme guide, that Radio warford has got a really strong connection with the Kenworth Carnival because there was a hospital Saturday movement in the 1930s and it raised funds for what was then uh, Warnford Hospital in Leamington and that's where our radio station started hence why we keep the name and we keep the name not that a lot of people know what Warnford means but that's why we keep it because we started Um, and funds for the movement also came from Kenilworth by putting on parades and processions which eventually became the carnival I understand so it's quite it's quite nice that we've got you know some sort of role with you tell us about the fireworks I'm really excited about the fireworks Okay, we um, have um, Bob Wilson's fun fair that come in and Marjorie and I meet with um, Willie Wilson and Emily Wilson and they've kindly put on um, a display which starts at 10pm um, which will be at the end of our evening entertainment um, in Abbey Fields. So to celebrate the end of the carnival for happy 80th carnival, we're going to have a lovely firework display. And you, you say you've got some local music entertainment as well? Yes, we've got four bands from the Kenilworth Youth Centre who are coming to perform in the evening. And that one of the Maid of Honours, um, Sophie, actually is performing in the first band. So we're looking forward to um, hearing her perform to see the other side of her. Um, this entertainment starts at half past seven. It's a free event. And in the breaks, because we have to have breaks to change the different bands, we will be interviewing um, past Carnival Queens and the Mayor will also be there. Right, I look forward to all this. So you'll have to talk again on Mike, won't you? Oh, that's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course I will. It's, uh, it's just exciting to be part of it all again, bringing back all the memories. Mm. I'd like to thank you, Marjorie and Marilyn, thank you very much indeed, and Anne, of course, for talking to Radio Warnford. And do you have a final message, Anne? To those of you who are listening, spread the word to your family and friends to come and watch the procession and join in the entertainment on Abbey Fields, which kicks off at one o'clock. Um, everyone from the Kenilworth Carnival would like to wish you a speedy recovery and you're in our thoughts and prayers.
So if you would like to get involved and help Kenilworth Carnival Committee, please email them at info at kenilworthcarnival.org.uk. This has been an Out and About production for Radio Warnford, Hospital Radio for South Warwickshire.